पंचकलपतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासाड़ी गौर भक्त वृंद Today we are going to read from Bhagavad Gita chapter 3 verse 42 Indriyani paranyahur indriye bhya param manah manasastu para budhir yo buddhe paratastu sah Translation The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind. And the he, the soul, is even higher than the intelligence. So here this chapter is dealing with uh, how to overcome lust and how to educate oneself and this fight against lust krishna explains that lust is the worst enemy of the conditioned soul so one of the ways of controlling lust or curbing it or even fully stopping it is by the practice of devotional service but without understanding these uh, different categories it is much harder so let me explain the the first part it says senses is higher than dull matter So dull matter would be for example the body because the body by itself is uh, well is living but uh, without the senses we wouldn't be able to exchange information with the world so the senses are higher and usually uh, well animal life is dominated by the senses plant life would be more like uh, closer to less senses dull matter very very few senses are uh, enabled so the soul who is in this state of mind is fully controlled by the senses and well they have no choice of what to do they cannot say well today i'm going to to fast or today i won't do this activity uh, animal life means completely dragged by the senses as soon as there is sort of an opportunity for eating or sleeping or mating there's no discrimination and and it's uh, pretty much uh, dragged by the senses there's no free will almost is uh, completely controlled so uh, that kind of life is not recommended according to the vedic way because it's animal life so if we have human body we should live a higher life so then the mind it is ex- it is explained the mind is higher than the senses so the mind is uh, more like a defense mechanism like if you ever uh, touch the fire and burn yourself there is this impression in the mind that oh whenever there is fire if you get close it will hurt so there was some experience that becomes uh, impregnated or impressed in the mind and then the mind will remember that and well there's many stories of people who saw a spider or something when they were a kid and then for the rest of their life whenever they see a spider they feel lots of fear now the mind usually is not very intelligent it's just based on pleasure and pain so for example things like fasting yeah well the mind won't like fasting because it's not so pleasurable or at least the mind won't perceive it like that so then the mind will say no i don't want to fast it's not good but if we see with the intelligence which is higher than the mind we understand that oh actually fasting is a very good thing is very good for the health every twice a month or something like that fasting uh, brings higher state of mind and clarity of thought and is just healthy for several reasons but uh, well of course the mind won't accept that so that is why intelligence is higher than the mind and then even above the intelligence there is a false ego and the soul which is even higher it is a 
false ego is uh, sometimes mentioned and sometimes not, but it uh, refers to the uh, soul who is conditioned. If someone has false ego, he's thinking, oh, I am this body, I am American, Chinese, and like that. Identified with a body means uh, false ego. To be someone who you're not, in fact. And the soul is actually who we are, who we are eternally, and that is the highest understanding. So, in spiritual life, we want to bring ourselves out from the consciousness of the senses and the mind, and at least situate ourselves in the platform of intelligence. When we study, for example, this scripture, Bhagavad Gita, we are situating ourselves in the platform of intelligence because it is not something based on, on some direct enjoyment of the senses and it's not either some mind process because we're not just speculating. We are accepting information, yes, using our senses and our mind, but to understand higher spiritual topics that are spoken by God himself. So then the intelligence becomes purified. Uh, when the intelligence is misused, well, that is like that of a thief or someone who's going to steal something. They are making plans on how to steal and, and get away with the sinful activity. But, uh, well, that kind of intelligence is not beneficial for spiritual life, so it's a waste. So, once, uh, once we understand, okay, at least I should be situated in this platform of intelligence. And then I should acquire spiritual knowledge, study the Vedas, Vedic knowledge. And then by this higher intelligence, then I can understand who is the soul or who am I, in fact. And as this is discovered, as I discover myself, this is why spiritual path is usually called self-realization uh, or the path of self-realization. It refers to this discovery instead of situating myself in this uh, senses, mind, intelligence, by understanding higher topics and understanding who is God and who am I and th that relationship, then we can understand who is the soul or who am I, in fact. And when this is discovered, this is called self-realization. In spiritual life, especially in the beginning, one is uh, recommended to abstain from sense objects because if one is used to a life of sense gratification, of depending too much on the senses, like for example, a man who's used to chasing many women, well, if you put another woman, he will again lose control. So he won't be very powerful in this endeavor. <laughs> he will usually become again like an animal. Uh, a sarcastic term for this is dancing dog. Uh, dancing dog is is not a very good position to be in because one is completely uh, movable and changeable according to whatever the dog wants. So, uh, if one is in that state of mind beginning in this spiritual path and, well, I'm dragged by women or by sense pleasure, all different kinds of sense gratification, I can stop, like, uh, for example, drinking, smoking and all these things. Well, then... Uh, we have to abstain ourselves from those things for a little while. Uh, although the taste will remain, but at least in the beginning, <laughs> the senses should be controlled. Like wild horses, they should be like, okay, you should uh, sit down, you know, calm down. And then uh, study scriptures, listen to, to persons about uh, spiritual topics, and, well, do all kinds of activities that will enhance our intelligence and increase our self-awareness. And automatically, as we make more and more progress, we'll be able to automatically uh, control the senses, even if there is too many inputs from the outside, by higher intelligence, by understanding of the soul, then we can say, oh, these lower things is not a problem. Not a problem. I'm not going to become a dancing dog anymore. <laughs> I have higher knowledge. And this is called a Brahmana. A person who is situated in this uh, spirit-soul understanding, or the Brahma Bhuta stage, who understands Brahman is called in the Vedas, he is capable of 
even in the midst of all kinds of sense objects, he can control himself and remain steady. That is a very good sign of spiritual practice, when even though you have lots of inputs from the outside, you can remain steady and control. If you have any comments or questions, please visit our website, thevedicway.org. Thank you. Hare Krishna.